Welcome to the Tuesday edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 602. I am Kevin Coulson. I am George Conger. Today is June 9th, and it's Kevin Coulson's birthday. All right, welcome to another show. We've done 601 already on the Ashes of Modern Shows. And yes, today is June 9th, 2020. I have turned President Reagan's favorite speed limit. I'm 55 now. Arrive alive, Kevin. Uh, yeah, arrive alive. I feel 85, but I'm only 55. Uh, it's that, 85 in Montana. That's <laughs> right, 85 in Montana. So I've survived. Uh, I, I went through 1968 already. Uh, so 2020 is just a, a, another version of that. Let's uh, move on to the news. Before we get there, let's talk really quickly about liking this program, sharing this program, subscribing to this program, and commenting. You guys are the best commenters. I, I've seen other commenters on other YouTube channels, and they, they don't hold a, a stick to you guys. You guys are amazing. You're patient. You're kind. You understand it's unscripted. You, from time to time, correct uh, my <clears throat> word use or improper word use, but you, you do it the it's unscripted fashion, and I appreciate that very much. For those people who really don't have time to devote to video, we have a podcast that's an exact copy of this program. If you go to the YouTube, click on the show notes, and you will see a link to the podcast, which you can download and subscribe to. We encourage you to do that. Let's move on and talk well, before we get too far, we always talk quickly about the weather. The weather here today in Milford is awesome. 75, no humidity. Can you beat that, George? Yes, it's 95, 100% <laughs> humidity. And it's going to rain at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock rain. Now, for some reason, we just had amazing weather here on the, uh, the East Coast the last couple of days. But we always pay for it. We get like four days of perfect you know, heavily weather. And then well, this torrential rain. Well, storm, Cristobal, we're, yeah. we're in the... Uh, we're in that part of Florida where the bands are still coming across from the outer rings of this tropical storm. Mm -hmm. And it goes farther to the east than it does to the west. And it's heading up north. Is it? See, I have not watched the news seriously f since like last November. So, so there's a tropical storm. Is there a hurricane out there going on too? Or? No, it's not a trop not a hurricane, but a lot of water. So okay. like okay. Louisiana and Arkansas have floated away again down Mississippi. And okay. So I was looking at the stats on Anglican Inc. And we have our great moments. If you go back far enough, we had the great uh, heresy proclamation by Catherine Jeffrey Shorey, where she attacked the Apostle Paul for uh, uh, casting out a demon of a, a young girl. And that was, that was 180,000. That was a my spike in viewership. Run, generally run three, four thousand, three, four, sometimes to five thousand all through the week. You know, every day is about three or four thousand. Not a big deal. It's great for an Anglican news uh, source like Anglican Inc. But George, I'm on here the last couple of days, 85,000, 80,000, 86,000. Well, what have you done? <laughs> It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> I just think somebody, they just gave this to me and I ran yeah, with it. Nice. Archbishop Carlo Vigano. You may remember the name. He was the former papal nuncio to Washington. And he was the one who has been in an ongoing dispute with Pope Francis about cover up of abusers, of Cardinal McCarrick and sort of the. Uh, hidden clique in the Vatican of uh, oh child abusers who cover for each other and promote each other and so forth. Mm -hmm. He uh, wrote a letter to President Trump. Uh, it was distributed to the religious media and we were sent a copy, which I thought was interesting because yeah. we're not a Catholic <laughs> uh, uh, we're not a Catholic uh, outlet, outlet. No, no. But we were sent a copy and they published it and it just went through the roof now if you go to some catholic conservative uh websites i'm sure it's done the same thing for their viewership 
LifeSite and Church Militant, things like that, they're probably going through the roof because this is red meat to traditional Catholics. Yeah. Uh, but for Anglicans and Episcopalians, yeah, we agree with your point, but oh, we really don't like your vocabulary. Yeah, but yeah, it's the the terms you use. But you, George, if I remember correctly, you've been drudged before. Once upon a time, I wrote an article about it was December thirty first. So mm -hmm. all nothing's happening in the news world. Church of England announced that they were investing heavily with Al Gore's latest green thing, and the Drudge Report picked that up, and. <laughs> That was when I was with the Church of England newspaper, and oh, good day, 1,500, 2,000 views. Half a million views within within a few hours from the Judge Report. It basically, I don't know how these things work, but is it possible to overload or melt? Uh, oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, sir. not ours, but oops, sorry, I just hit the microphone. This is about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it's before they had good caching and uh, good uh, redundant systems. Yeah, it was easy to crash. I, I do remember when you got drudged. I saw the link on Drudge. I click on it, and it didn't go anywhere because it had crashed the servers. Um, yeah, you can have high volume for good stories, and you know the Catherine Jeffrey story was our high mark, and I think this story now is going to be our high mark. I don't know if we want to sell out to the Roman Catholics who just post their controversial stories, but um, it, it was nice to see such a wonderful spike. Now I read through this. And I gotta say, he kind of seems the the Archbishop like a conspiracy guy, you know. Well, he's an eighty plus year old Italian, uh, yeah, right. and I don't mean that in a dismissive way. But he no. comes out of a particular culture. Mm -hmm. Italy <clears throat> has been famous for having scandals involving Freemason societies and secret societies. And in the United States, when we talk about Freemasonry, we sort of think wink, wink, laugh, laugh. It's you know, so sort of the old farts down at the lodge. Now there, I've just insulted some people, but it's it's my it's a mildly harmless thing on par with the Elks or the Moose Lodge or mm -hmm. the Fraternal Order of whatever. But in Italy, Freemasonry has long been condemned by the Catholic Church as uh, as an anti-Christian uh, apostate movement. And in Italy, there have been secret societies that have gotten involved in politics and who have sought to control finance and business. So in Italy, there's a very different tone about these things. So what Vigano is writing is that President Trump, you need to stand tall because the riots in the United States are being funded and being driven not by the crisis of racism. Now that may be get gets what some of the people out on the streets, but what is funding it, what is driving it, what is pushing the left-wing media coverage is an attempt by the deep state, which he links to Freemasonry and to secret societies and to a new world order that seek to destroy democracy and Western civilization and replace it with a rule by the elites. Now, half of that I agree with half. I don't agree with. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's just. I, I, I think that I think the desire to take down America this way is there, but I don't think the infrastructure uh, to do so uh, on a whim. You know, there's not a whole bunch of people walking around D.C. with little Knights Templar rings and or masonry symbols <laughs> trying to take down our our but nation. He, but his argument is that you know the this began in earnest with the COVID nineteen, where uh, the elites sought to basically, but through authoritarian means, shut down society, shut down opposition, shut down everything that uh, a free people can do, movement, association, worship, in the name of health. And what, now that this virus is receding, and we've seen that a lot of the science, the, the science, I use the Al Gore word, with the quotation marks around it, has been spurious. Extremely uh, spurious. The unrest and pent up anger of people living in tenements and uh, students who have to go home from school because there's nothing to do, has found an outlet in violence and an orgy of craziness that is being driven by a plan to destroy democratic freedoms. So Vigano, is applauding Trump 
as someone who has been the most Christian president, even though Trump is not a Christian as some people understand it. As I understand it. That he is applauding him for being right on religious freedom, being right on abortion, being right and being willing to listen and to dialogue with Christian leaders to help bring about a Christian society. So Vigano is not saying that Donald Trump is a perfect Christian, but he has been God's instrument in the West. Now, that's a controversial point. It is. Well, no, that's it is. That's going to turn off some people, but well, at, don't the, be at turn- the same time, people will love it. I mean, understand, my point of view is, you know, Trump is like an old king from the Old New, Old Testament. You know, now you have to determine what king he is. Uh, in fact, in the pa- comments, what king do you think uh, uh, Trump is? Put that in the comments. David. David. <laughs> uh, uh, there's quite a few to choose from. Uh, and please don't just, you know, explain your answer. So uh, it is interesting. It's a it's a great story, and uh, we're not going to just pander to Roman uh, Catholic c- controversial stories. But it was, it is neat to see that people are still trying to engage on a religious level that high to send letters to Trump. That's that's cool. See where yeah. I where I agree with him. Where I agree with him is I may not accept say the Freemason link Freemasonry language, but I do believe this is a spiritual conflict. Sure. I do believe that uh, this is, uh, at heart, this is a question of sin and brokenness that have an overlay of racism, have an overlay of other things. But, oh, like the bishops of the province four, which is the South, and the Episcopal Church, just released a statement saying we should work to uh, end systematic racism. Now, I know they mean well, Mm -hmm. but I roll my eyes when I see that because, okay, Tell me which button to push, no, which defi- lever to pull. Define Def- it. Define it. Define what it. Is, and, you know, what is systematic racism? It's nothing because it has no definition. It's a meaningless buzzword that allows people to virtue signal and say, you know, the silliest thing. And I want to mention a little thing I saw in the news today, um, which sort of speaks to the v- Vigano, what Vigano's thesis of the elite's on a power trip, not on having the best interests of the people at heart. New York City, it's illegal for churches to gather. And the fact that Mayor de Blasio has been sending the police to break up religious worship, and he's been particularly hard on the Jews. Very hard. Oh, man. And a Jewish Hasidic group had a worship service uh, this past Friday, a festival of some sort. Yeah, it was a party more than it was a worship service, but whatever. Well, it, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It, and the police came and the rabbi leading it said well this is a george floyd commemoration service and the police walked away (laughs) because their orders were (laughs) break up worship break up you know you know jewish activities but if they called a george floyd commemoration service they're allowed to go ahead now from a public health uh perspective Explain that one to me. If well, they really have it, the best interest of the people at heart. Yeah, I mean, at, for, I, want, I use this term often, the 30,000 foot level. When you look down and you see the the BLM, Black Lives Matter people, are, are able to gather in such large groups, knowing that COVID is transmissible and that 20% of people who uh, come down with COVID has to be hospitalized of that, 20 percent you know five percent of them die so maybe we're telling them that black lives don't matter if we're letting them riot in such large proportions so i see this mixed hypocrisy message that we're giving um these rioters we have a parishioner who may have come down with COVID. it'd be the first actual parishioner as opposed to people's relatives in other places here in hooterville we don't really have much commerce with the outside world she she went to two things she went to a uh, march on uh, you know a protest march over you know support black lives matter and she went to the space launch in cape uh, cape kennedy um and otherwise she's been you know sheltering at home doing the local stuff and both of those were allowed 
you could you could go in Florida. Uh, hmm. I mean, um, up until this up until uh, Pentecost Sunday, you couldn't go to church, uh, but less than ten people. But you can go with ten thousand people to a space launch or with a thousand people to a march in Orlando. So there's an inconsistency uh, with the, with uh, what, and this comes into Vigano's point is that this is arbitrary. This is being purely arbitrary. Now we see it more in people like the governor of California and the governor of uh, Michigan, uh, just imposing rules that uh, you know you can go into a store, but you can't buy this. You can't go down that aisle, but you can go down this aisle. Um, now, where is the scientific reasoning for that? But, and, and once again, I want to point to Connecticut. No riots, no people marching the seat, no buildings have been burned. Um, why? We have an extremely high uh, minority owned business. I guess if it's extremely high, could it be minority owned? Well, minorities own a lot of businesses here. We're not going to be burning them down. You know, they stood up right away and said, no, uh uh. You know, and we also have had police reform here for at least 15 years. We have uh, independent agencies that run our police uh, race relations, and uh, it's it's top notch. So I mean, we, Florida, we haven't really had any problems either. Yeah. But it's not because we've taken the Connecticut approach. We've taken what I call the uh, the Cleveland approach. Did I think I mentioned this? But there was a wonderful little story about this Italian bakery in downtown Cleveland where five or six Italian men are standing out in front of it with uh, baseball bats and shotguns. <laughs> and the looters are coming down the street and they burn the building to one side, they burn the building to the other side. But for some reason, they left the, they left the good fellows alone. Well, uh, if, you, if you try to burn down the uh, 7-Eleven, the, the store clerk is gonna come out with his shotgun blazing in Florida. Now, also, I, you probably saw this as well. Minneapolis wants to disband the police. Milwaukee has uh, voted at the um, city council level, level to disband the police. Wow! <laughs> I want to be I want to be a business of any size in Minneapolis now. Well, there are two ways to do this. There's what mm -hmm. they did in Camden about six seven years ago. The city of Camden, which is one of the worst blighted places in the United States, mm -hmm. had a city police force that was uh, overpaid, you know, patrol officers making $120,000 a year, officers making 200000 And if you actually did uh, patrol duty, you got a bonus on top of that. Oh, it just, and they had pensions that were just, it was, you know, and it was inefficient, it was corrupt, they had, uh, Camden is a ma majority minority city, and it, even though the force was majority minority, um, it was just a mess. Well, the police, the the city went back. I think it went bankrupt or had to be reorganized, and the yeah, state, that, yeah. the state shut down. The, the state dissolved the police department and set up a county police agency. So all the little suburb towns, you know, Cherry Hill and whatnot, Somerset County, New Jersey, and. Camden had no, and all the police officers are on the road. They only have civilians uh, doing the back office work. And they've done community policing and all this. And Camden, unlike Philadelphia, had no riots. And Camden is actually worse off than Philadelphia, and yet it escaped. Uh, now, the thing I would want to say about eliminating the police department, I'm a father of two adult girls. The eliminating police is an anti-woman initiative yeah. because, you know, my daughter, uh, who one lives in Seattle, one lives in Los Angeles, she, they can live independently because they can count on the police. They can call 911 if there's a burglar. They have a modicum of protection. Be and if that is taken away, they in essence have to move back into their father's orbit if they want to be protected or they have to basically pretend it's like living in Mexico where you have to have guards and it's a, it's a jungle out there. I could let them into my gun closet and they could borrow some stuff then, yeah. So I mean, this is one of those things that people have not thought through mm -hmm. 
And if the Minneapolis City Council and the, Mil and the Milwaukee City Council continue down that road, I will guarantee you Donald Trump will win Wisconsin and Minnesota <laughs> in the election. Because, this, you know, being anti-police is a surefire loser when all you do is turn on your TV and see riots and murder and mayhem. And, oh, by the way, we're going to take the police away from you. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to watch. Now, let's transition. I want to talk about a real conspiracy. Okay, we talked about the Archbishop Vigano's uh, conspiracy du jour. There's actually a real conspiracy. And I want, I'm going to title it right now. You can use this in news reports for how you talk to your friends and stuff like that. It's called the Canterbury Conspiracy. It's no secret that Justin Welby does not like uh, Foley Beach, does not like GAFCON, does not like uh, the reach and the power that GAFCON has. Uh, Justin Welby had lots of trouble deciding who he's going to invite to the 2020 Lambeth. He said, mm -hmm. I'll invite all the bishops except for their uh, gay spouses. That caused controversy. He went on and he actually invited uh, Foley Beach to be a, what do they call it? Uh, observer. Observer. You can't be there as an archbishop, but you can come as an observer. And uh, Foley Beach said, no, thank you for the invitation. So you're stuck with a large GAFCON, very powerful. The majority of Anglicans belong to GAFCON and a Anglican communion that has just lost the brand. The, the brand name Anglican is, it's gone it, for all intents and purposes. Nobody wants to be part of the Church of England anymore. That's gone. Nobody wants to be part of the, uh, the old established Anglican communion anymore. That's gone. The fun of Anglicanism, the growth of Anglicanism, um, the realness, the orthodoxy of Anglicanism is found in Gafcon. So Justin Welby and some other leaders in uh, the ACC have decided it's time to do something about that. George, what's the plan? Well, let let me state at the beginning: this is commentary. What I have I have not gained the ability to read the minds. When, no, we just have we have some paperwork that's come amongst us. But we so, have, we're not reading minds, we're interpreting the paperwork. We're making interpretations. So this is a news analysis at this stage. So That's please do not hear us to say this is what is going, this is un, well. Yeah. The uh, situation facing uh, Canterbury and the, Lam the Lambeth Conference was looking pretty dicey. Um, you could tell in the run up to it before they decided to postpone it due to COVID because they were inflating the numbers by saying we're going to have over a thousand bishops and their spouses hmm. now all and which basically disguised the fact that there are about a thousand anglican bishops but half are going to stay away so they get to the thousand by adding in the spouses so we we saw some puffery on the numbers and so a Lambeth, through the person of Josiah Dawu Ferron, the ACC secretary, general secretary, is on a charm offensive. And the object of their charm offensive, oddly enough, is Foley Beach. The Lambeth has written off the Nigerians and the Ugandans. Because, and Nigeria, Uganda, Church of England has nothing to offer them. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't need anything. They don't want anything. Uh, they occasionally get a handout from an American or British charity, but they're pretty self-sufficient, and they're going to they're they're firm in their beliefs. Rwanda is the same way, and then you have some Congo, other provinces yeah. that are that way. Congo is a little more desperate because of the civil war there, so they're opening. You know, they'll be happy to talk. South Sudan is happy to talk because they sure. need it. The, the, the local circumstances. Yeah. That being said, they've written off GAFCON completely. They're not going to bother reaching out to the GAFCON core. They're focusing on Josiah Wadai Froon on the Global South. That sort of middle group that oppose what is happening with the Episcopal Church in Canada, but have not been as vociferous. And so 
they've gone on a charm offensive to win over completely the global south, getting these guys not only to come to Lambeth, but to be good soldiers beyond the team. And they understand and they see that Foley Beach, who has a key position, who was chairman, who was is he chairman? No, not chairman, uh, president. President. President of GAFCON yeah, yeah. is also, I think, vice president or something of the Global South. No, he's uh, something to do. He has a role in the Global South. He, he's a leader he's not, in the Global he's, South. He's not vice he, president. Yeah. And he is well, uh, well viewed by the Global South. Mm -hmm. And so Lambert says to himself, we have something Foley Beach wants, which is recognition of the ACNA by, uh, by Canterbury and sort of let's hold out the carrot that you can become a province of the Anglican communion too. And so what they're doing is they're ask, they're going through American moderate conservatives, the communion partners, they're going through some of the communion, the global South people who are already on board their agenda and basically trying to lead Foley beach down a path of accommodation and hold out the possibility if he encourages them, the global South to, fully join the Foley Beach team. Uh, I'm sorry, fully yes. join the Welby team. Now, it's not being expressed in these terms. Far from it. It's not being, you know, said, you know, we're we're going to pull a bait and switch on you and but let, let me let me sort of wind it out. The Church of England has postponed their living in love whatever. It sounds like the Julia Roberts movie. They're <laughs> living love out loud and large and all this and that whatever the the uh, human sexuality thing they've postponed that because of COVID 19. well they had originally timed it to be after lambeth because if it comes down in favor of same sex issues it would blow it would have blown up lambeth so when lamp so they had to postpone that when lambeth was postponed part of the episcopal church pushing back the general convention of 2021 that's a year out, and the Episcopal Church is pushing that out even farther. Now, the public reason is we don't have any money, which is true. The cash flow has stopped. The second reason is, well, everybody there is going to be over 65. That's true. But the Episcopal Church still has money in the bank to pay for it. But it just is easier for Welby if the Episcopal Church doesn't finalize its plans on gay marriage until after Lambeth. So it, the path of least resistance for the Episcopal Church was to push it back and the Church of England to push it back. So the, so the plan that is coming out of, of London right now is that charm offensive to get the weak, weaker provinces of the global south, to get the primates who are less aware of what the situation is and to use those whom they feel they can manipulate with promises of uh, things that they want. So the world hasn't come to a stop in the Anglican politics. It's actually getting harder, darker, and dirtier. So we had a kind of conspiracy and a real conspiracy in today's show, and then you know all, all the mess in between. Guy, yeah, it's been a great show, and I really want to follow up on uh, more of this. Maybe I can get a, another interview with somebody in uh, GAFCON and, and talk about uh, their long-term plans because everybody has to kind of restart, reboot now. 2020 was I, I, just this morning. I got a pop-up on my phone because I had forgot to uh, delete the calendar thing. This was going to be, uh, was this GAFCON weekend, the GAFCON meeting down in... Uh, uh, Rwanda? Did it happen? No, wait, no, no, no. They postponed that because Rwanda's been shut down. Why? Well, yeah, no, but I didn't delete it from my calendar. I got. I was a reminder. Oh, this is. You, you better be in Rwanda this week. So all this, you know, got sh stopped. They're all rebooting. How's GAF kind of going to be rebooting their future conferences? And how is uh, Lambeth going to be re rebooting their 2021 stuff? It's going to be uh, interesting to watch because there's so many more dynamics now because people really don't want to meet in mass they don't want to uh, show up and and not and, maintain a six foot distance and one of the things that i think is fascinating is how justin welby is always yet is always two or three steps behind the news cycle you know he's now appearing on youtube wearing a clergy shirt decked out with little uh uh 
kunte, uh, what are they called? Yeah. The little African motif, you know, here and on the collar and everything. And he's releasing statements about uh, systematic racism and white supremacy. And it's just, he's just so late to the game because the game has moved on. And he's and now we've got the problem in the Church of England of the hard left radicals. They're tossing statues into the into the into the harbor of Bristol of benefactors of the Church of England, and they're basically allowing the hard left to dictate uh, church postures and policies. And you have these supine bishops. Uh, the Bishop of Bristol, uh, Vivian Fall, who is was a dreadful. Uh, Dean of York, and but just got promoted anyway because she's a woman, and then, and now they have a new Dean of Bristol are making all these uh, pro Black Lives Matter tweets and getting really involved, but at the same time they slap down their clergy uh, for leaving the ha their houses and offering political views. The lead the rules mm -hmm. that apply to the leaders don't apply to the rest of the church, and the uh, problem is your, your phone's on the table. I hear a vibration mm -hmm. because your phone is vibrating. Mm -hmm. You got a call there? Yes, yeah, somebody yeah. from Miami who I don't oh. know. Do you have your extended car warranty up to date? Because yes, that could I, be it. <laughs> well, the, the, what I what I was what I meant mean to say, and Kevin, you can clean this up to make it succinct, <laughs> is that the, uh, the loony left is driving the Church of England just as it's driving portions of the American political body, and when this all settles they'll have found themselves pulled so far in one direction that they're not going to be able to cover everything. Well, here, here's how you clean it up. When you kind of are driving down the road and you find yourself, oop, I'm a little over the shoulder, I'm about to hit the dirt. You don't crank the wheel so hard to the other side that you go in the other ditch. That doesn't work. You kind of slowly readjust and get yourself back on the road. Don't overreact. What we as humans, we love to overreact. We as politic love to overreact. We as Christians love to overreact. It's a sad nature. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 602 of Anglican Unscripted.